Hello to all and welcome. My name is Bryce. I am a geologist and I aim to entertain people with knowledge about geology, the study of everything that has to do with rocks and minerals. Welcome to my channel, Rockology. The word mineral as we know it means different things for different times in history, cultures, and language, and more. There was once a time when humans separated everything into three kingdoms, animal, vegetable, and mineral. Today, miners refer to it as anything out of the ground, dietitians refer to it as nutritional minerals. In different fields, one word may mean something else entirely. In the 1900s, mineralogists and geologists of the time devised a way to describe minerals of the earth in detail, such as quartz, diamond, and beryl. Now, a good geologist needs to understand basics, physics, and chemistry in order to be a geologist. But the fact is that YouTube has numerous other channels doing chemistry and physics, while I focus on material that requires a basic understanding of these. Videos you should find to help you understand these concepts are heat, pressure, gravity, atoms, bonds, properties of elements, the periodic table, cations and anions, and more. I will try to break some of these concepts down in future videos when necessary to understand. Geologists over time have cataloged over 4,400 different minerals to exist in mankind, and we discover on average 50 more a year. A mineral is a combination of atoms of various elements on the periodic table. A molecule, that which in a solid state can be a mineral when it undergoes certain geologic processes. For example, the element sodium, Na, and chloride, Cl, together can make salt, or as it's known in geology, as halite, under certain pretenses, which we will learn later on. But what classifies as a mineral? What do geologists say? What are the parameters that tell us what can and can't be a mineral? While there is no name for it, there are six parameters that must be met in order to be considered a mineral. The first parameter is it must be a solid. No question, not a liquid or gas. I'm sure we all know the difference between these states of matter existing due to changes in temperature or pressure. Mercury, an element, is still technically considered a mineral due to historical purposes with its physical and chemical properties, even though it doesn't fit the criteria because it's a liquid at room temperature, or at least around it. The second is it must be formed naturally by abiotic, non-organic, or biotic, organic processes. Now this is a bit argued since things like opal, rubies, and diamonds, etc. can be made in labs, so therefore not natural since they were created by man. But really, we know these substances are made naturally in the earth, so they are still considered minerals, but their man-made counterparts are not. If you buy your spouse a synthetic piece of jewelry, it's not a real mineral. I don't really care what you buy for jewelry at the end of the day, no shame. Unless, of course, it's synthetic opal. But to us, naturally occurring is anything that can happen that we can observe. For instance, there's probably a planet out there that makes minerals we can create in a lab, but not within the Earth's conditions. But they're still minerals if they fit the parameters and are created naturally on said planet. The third parameter is it must be an element or compound with a characteristic chemical composition. For instance, quartz is a mineral made of only silicon dioxide, SiO2, and this chemical compound molecule or formula is repeated throughout a certain space through a visible crystal of quartz. If another non-SiO2 atom or molecule bonds with it, it ceases to be the mineral that it was before and makes a new or multiple new minerals, depending on how much material we have to work with and its chemistry. If, say, SiO2 experiences an increase in temperature that allows the mineral to melt, it will either recrystallize back to quartz or form a completely different mineral. Of course, there is the exception since most minerals have impurities within the internal crystalline structure. For example, Himalayan salt that is used for those famous lamps are about 98% NaCl, or sodium chloride, and the other 2% ranges from dozens of impurities that existed in the spaces as the salt crystallized. But it won't ionize your air like it says on the back of the box, that's pseudoscience. It's just a pretty chunk of salt. The fourth parameter is orderly internal structure. So what is something that doesn't have an orderly internal structure that makes a good example? Well, it's actually SiO2 again, but it's not quartz. It's glass. See, man-made glass and natural glass, like obsidian, 
and windows have no internal structure. They are all random with not much for a repeating crystalline structure. I'll show you this in detail in another video sometime. The fifth is it expresses an external crystalline form. All minerals express an external crystalline form. This is studied more extensively in the subtype of geology known as mineralogy and crystallography. What you need to know is all minerals have an external crystalline form. Take again quartz for example. All clear quartz crystals have the same doubly terminated or terminated quartz shapes, which at max is six sides or faces made up of six rectangles and six to twelve made up of triangles. So anytime you find a mineral large enough to view with your eye, it should have a crystalline shape, unless of course it has been bashed around after it formed and no longer resembles a crystal of that mineral. The last in six is it must have a characteristic chemical, physical, and optical properties. Like any mineral, it will have a set of distinct properties that when in field or lab, we can figure out what the mineral is based on these properties. One example of a physical property is its hardness. A chemical is what does it react with. And lastly, optical is what we observe under a microscope or even a hand lens. Now that we know some of the basics, let's work through a few examples if you would like. And I highly encourage if you are studying geology, is to pause the video after I give you a substance to see if it fits the six parameters. Then continue the video to see if you are correct. I shall work through the six parameters together with you if you don't pause the video. First up we have is human bone. Could this be considered a mineral? Yes, human bone actually does fit the parameters for being a mineral, especially since our body crystallizes it out to create our skeletal structure, therefore being natural and created by a biotic process. What about body salt? The salt that we secrete when we sweat, could this be considered a mineral? If you said yes, you're correct. It's like the bone. Our body creates this biotically, therefore being natural. Now, what about wood? Could wood be considered a mineral? If you said no, you'd be correct. Wood does not have an orderly internal structure. Now, what about the shells of clams? Could this be considered a mineral? If you said yes, you're correct. Just like the bone and body salt, shells of clams are created and crystallized out naturally by the clam. Now what about coal? Could coal be considered a mineral? If you said yes, you're wrong. Coal is first off considered a rock. Unlike bone, body salt, and clamshells, coal is mostly made up of an organic molecule that does not have an internal crystalline structure, so it can't even be considered a mineral. It is part of the sedimentary rock layer of coal, but not individually a mineral. Now what about flint? Could this be considered a mineral? Surprisingly, you may not know this, but flint is not a mineral. It's actually considered what we call a mineraloid. A mineraloid is where it's almost a mineral, but it's lacking one of the parameters. And in this case, it's lacking an orderly internal structure. But other than that, it fits the other five parameters, but it's still not considered a mineral. Lastly, is tourmaline a mineral? If you said yes, you are correct. It fits all six of the parameters and is indeed, in fact, a mineral. I hope this video is worth the watch. I'm always up for constructive criticism to make the channel better if you have any. Thanks for watching, you guys. Hope you come back with a thirst for more knowledge because knowledge is a power of its own and it can unlock many doors to other knowledge. If you have any questions, ask in the comments. Maybe I'll answer with a video. Hope you guys come back. I'll see you again soon and rock on.
If you like the content you just watched, please help the channel grow, like and subscribe, it gets me out to more viewers. On top of that, I also have a Patreon set up if you'd like to donate money to the channel. This money will be used so that I can buy other equipment to make the videos more interesting and also create more content that I can't with what I have right now. I appreciate it as always.